It's Nick here for Into Boxing, and I am delighted to be joined by promoter Kala Sowland. Kala, first of all, how are we? Not too bad, Nick. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Calm after the storm of last night of the AJ Usyk rematch, which we'll come on to shortly. But let's start with your charge, first of all. Philip Hergovic won his fight with Gilles Zhang, became the mandatory for the IBF. Talk us through the fight and uh, Philip's performance. It was a tough fight. Yeah, um, Any fight for a world title mandatory position at heavyweight is going to be a tough fight. And I think that Philip learned a lot during the fight. Um, I was surprised at Zhang's engine. Um, but if you look at the overall fight, I think he threw... For every punch that Zhang threw, he threw two and a half. And... Uh, you know, I saw a lot of comments online. The people thought he lost the fight, this, that, and the other. Um, it was a, it was a good fight. It was a close fight. I would say that if you look at the knockdown of that score to ten eight, um, it certainly wasn't a knockdown. I don't know what it was. Um, I think Philip was a bit green there instead of complaining about it because he should have should have complained, made it clear that it wasn't a knockdown. That might I don't know. The referee sort of looked at him. He won't saying anything, and then he counted. Um, but he's he just sort of, I don't I mean what not blaming Zhang, it wasn't a, it wasn't a dirty fight, I don't think. Um, but he just sort of pulled him to the floor, and um you see it in the replay quite clearly. So if that's a 10-8 round and people have got that down as a 10-8, then of course it's even closer. So uh, you know, everyone's got an opinion, we all know the expression, but um the main thing is he is now the mandatory to the heavyweight championship of the world. Yeah, I thought it was a really interesting fight. It was a really exciting fight. I think he had a bit of everything. Uh, obviously, like you say there, Philip down in round one, uh, there was a clash of heads. There was uh, Hergovic was in a bit of trouble. End of the fifth, nine swung in Zhang's favour. It was like, it had everything as, as a heavyweight it, fight. Yeah, it was. It was. I was, I was, I was a bit shocked at, I don't know who the producer was. I don't know if they got him from Beijing, but um, but the, the what was incredible was that in rounds where, you know, it was a big Hergovic round in the in the break they would show, they'd show like the one punch that Zhang had landed in that round. It was a little bit bizarre like that, but at the end of the day, like I said, job done. That's it, and that's that's the main thing for you guys. Obviously, job done for Hergovic. How how will that work now um, in terms of the mandatory? Because obviously, the with Usyk beating Joshua, um, there's obviously the talk of the Tyson Fury fight. How how long do you reckon Philip will have to wait to sort of be mandated fully to say that this fight's got to happen in so many days? Well, the last IBF mandatory, and it goes on cycles, was uh, Kubrat Pulev, but Kubrat Pulev that mandatory was already delayed because of COVID. So actually the mandatory is well overdue. Uh, we all know the, the very famous uh, task we've had in going through the rankings of getting a mandatory ch uh, challenger. So once again, all credit to Zhang um, for taking that that opportunity and, and, and coming close and showing a lot of people maybe they should have been trying it as well. Um, but um, it's overdue. Um, however... Let's be realistic about it. We're not going to step in, you know, we're not going to have, we would step in the way, but I don't think we've got any place to step in the way if they, if they want to make uh, Fury Music next. Or I, I I would love to see that fight. So, um, yeah, that, that of course, would, would, would have precedence. Yeah, it would be great fights. So some great fights in the heavyweight division. Let's turn our attentions then to the main event last night, Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk. What did you think of both men's performance? And uh, let's start with AJ first and foremost. I uh, listen. I, he's he's you know I I feel for the, the negativity he's he's got today in terms of the, you know the throwing the belts and you know you he is someone I think he said it although it was an outburst I I think if you look at what he said and what he was trying to say I I have to totally go along with what he's saying he has not grown up at the age of five, picking up a pair of gloves and, and going through the amateur system like that. He's been fast-tracked. He's an outstanding athlete. Um, and, he, you know, he improved from the last fight to this fight. Unfortunately, he was up against Alexander Uzik, who is 
you know, and I, you know, someone who has picked the gloves up at five years of age, and is a is a seriously talented athlete. Um, and that was the difference last night. You know, um, can AJ improve again? I'm sure he can. Um, he's so dedicated to the sport. He's great for the sport. Um, and I wish him well on his journey because I think I think he, he certainly got some exciting fights in him in the future. Who would you like to see Anthony Joshua fight next? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of talk last night the Dylan White rematch. You got Deontay Wilder coming back. Are they are they sort of the names that you think AJ should uh, should be shooting for? Well, listen, I mean, I, it's always you know you never cry over spilled milk, but. I do think that he'll look back after when he's hung hung him up in in many years, hopefully, um, and look at this fight and you know why didn't they find an agreement around taking a fight in between and learning with a new coach and then taking Uzik because like I said I think there's still he 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 certainly will think be thinking there's room for improvement and I'm sure he will improve again. Um, he didn't give him that self that that chance. Um, and, you know, I, I think a Dillian White fight's very interesting, of course, for the general public. But, you know, there's a lot. Listen, the heavyweight scene at the moment is on fire. We you know we saw Hergovic Zhang last night, great fight. Um, but there's, you know, there's so many. You know, you've got Joyce Parker coming up. That's a, that's a good fight. Um, and you can, you can read them off. There's, there's, you know, six, seven, eight great names out there for him to, to take on, you know, um, and I'm sure he'll be looking to learn under the, under his new trainer and, and develop. It's almost like, Callum, we need you to get a World Boxing Super Series for the heavyweights going. Yeah, yeah, I was I was with the World Boxing Super Series last week and uh, putting some plans together for exciting stuff in the future, but, I mean, it does cry out for, for a tournament, this this heavyweight division at the moment, absolutely. Certainly does. And uh, we touched on it there, Alexander Usyk, uh, Tyson Fury potentially down down the line. Um, thoughts on that fight? And, and how would you see that playing out? Um, Usyk Hergovic, yeah? Or Usyk, so, or Usyk Fury, if, if that... Uh, we know. Yeah, well, we'll start with Usyk Fury. I think... Uh, for me, Tyson has it all. He has the size, but he also has the boxing IQ that I think will make it very difficult for Uzik. So I'm going Fury. Um, I think that with, with Hergovic, I can see him banging Uzik out because he stands there, he likes to trade, I don't think that I don't think that Uzik's got what it takes to hurt um, Hergovic. He's not big enough like that, and I can see him. I can see them trading, and I can see Hergovic banging him out. So those are my my two uh, predictions on that. Nice, nice, and interesting, as you say, and as we've touched on there, plenty of interesting heavyweight fights. Let's stay with the heavyweights if we can. Uh, we're speaking to Nathan Gorman and Fabio Wardley this morning. Um, now, obviously, Fabio's got the injury. Are we sort of closer to getting that fight over the line? And I think Nathan spoke about possibly having a fight maybe in the interim if Fabio's not going to be ready till November, December. Yeah, no, Nathan will be will be active before then. Uh, it's a great fight, um, but Nathan needs that activity, so we can't wait. But we are in. We've had positive dialogue with with um, with Matchroom, with Frank and Eddie, and um, you know we're just put on a blockbuster with them, uh, with Eubank Ben. So we know we, we know how to get things done there, um, and I'm sure we'll get it done for for November. But um, our focus now will be on the next fight. We can't we can't lose track of. Of that, and we, we simply can't wait. So we, we're going to have to take a fight in between, and that will be in September. That'll be live on Channel Five. Uh, and another one of your fighters we've spoken about in the in the past was uh, Josh Kelly, Troy Williamson. Any movement on that? No, I, think, I believe the first bid is scheduled for next month. Um, you know, uh, 
we've spoken to the to to his promoters, um, and I think the next two three weeks we'll see what that's going. And you mentioned there, obviously, the big one that you made with Matt Troom, with uh, Chris Eubank Jr. and Connor Ben. I know we only spoke sort of a few days ago about that, and we spoke about the undercard, and uh, obviously there has been the Anthony Joshua fight. But is there any sort of any news that you can give us on the undercard, anything that's been yeah. lined up? We'll be next week. Um, uh, NIST had a meeting with uh, with Frank and Eddie in, in, in Saudi, so they're putting it together at the moment. Um you know, it'll be Wasserman and, and, and Matchroom fighters. And um, I'm sure we're, it will. there'll be a couple of very interesting duels on there. Like I said, you know, I'm looking forward to pitting our guys and girls against theirs and uh, coming out on top. Yeah, so it'd be an uh, exciting card for sure, I'm, and I'm sure of that. Uh, quickly, last one from me. Um, KSI, obviously... Uh, thoughts on him fighting? There we go. Misfits boxing hat on there. Um, two yeah, fights the in one night. Week. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I've got to say, I'm, I'm learning on the job uh, in this uh, in this wacky world of crossover boxing. But you know, what better man to to be doing it together with than than with uh, with KSI? He really is uh, phenomenal. His ideas, like. You know, I look at them from a classic boxing perspective, obviously, and I'm like, no, nah, that, that can't work. And then uh, the reaction's huge. And, you know, he's he's going to fight Swarms, obviously, another crossover boxer, um, rapper, um, tough Southeast London man. Um, and then he's going to take on... Uh, a, a, a basically a, 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 a pro who's who who you, he should be taking on at this stage of his career if he were a a, a normal boxer. So it's uh, it's very, it's very interesting. I, I I don't think I've ever. Well, I, I don't think I know. I've never seen it done before um, at this stage of anyone's career or, or in the later stages of anyone's career. Um, I'm getting ready for an absolutely wild week with these guys. I mean, it's a stat card. Um, of you know some very very interesting characters, and hopefully we get some real 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 great action at the end of it as well. Um, it's the stage is set; it's going to be a sold out O2 in London. Um, yeah, the zone pay per view. It's uh, it's going to be very interesting, that's for sure. Uh, I don't think I've been so excited for a fight week in my whole life. Uh, excited and. And nervous, I'd say, on <laughs> on on what's gonna what's gonna hit me or not hit me. So um, yeah, yeah, get getting ready for that. That's gonna be fun. It is gonna be a, a lot of fun this week. And on KSI, quickly, if if he comes through the two fights next Saturday night, um, is the is the plan just to keep him active? Is he sort of like full time going with the boxing now? Because obviously he has a lot of other yeah, interests I mean, outside of it. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, he he he's. When I say he trains like a boxer, I mean, he really trains like any other boxer. Um, his camp has been ferocious. Um, had his last sparring, I believe, yesterday. Um, he takes it like, you know, it's the same with any pro. Two sessions a day. Um, he's got top trainers, nutritionists, everything. And he, he really is, uh, he, he approaches it. Like like any pro would, um, and then uh, you know, of course, you know, keep him active. But he he wants to fight. He wants that Jake Paul fight, of course. Um, but he's you know, at the end of the day, he's uh, everyone who calls out Jake Paul. You always think, ah, oh, they want it for the, you know, for the likes or the follows or the money or whatever it is. Well, this is probably the only person on planet Earth to call Jake Paul out who's got more followers, more money. And is 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 bigger in that segment. So it's a weird one, isn't it? You know, um, you've got every cat and dog calling out Jake Paul because they're trying to jump on that train, whereas Jake Paul's sort of calling him out and and bantering with him because he knows that that's the fight that makes the most sense out of all of them out there. But you know, let's get through this week. It's a big week. He's he's he's. You know, he's, he's 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 certainly got his work cut out for next Saturday. We're not looking past that. 
Certainly. Well, Kala, thank you very much for giving into boxing some of your time this afternoon. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll catch up with you with a throughout yeah, fight so week and, and beyond. Super. Super. All Thanks the best. very much. Okay.